Hi there folks, my name's Connor, I'm an ecologist from Perth and welcome to the second video in this rewilding mini-series on Woodlands TV. In the last video we looked at what is rewilding. In this video we're going to be exploring two approaches to increasing woodland cover, tree planting and natural regeneration. And we're going to look at the benefits and challenges that they pose. Tree planting is carried out by humans, either by hand or machine, while natural regeneration is the process by which trees self-seed and are spread by animals, water or wind. But how can landowners decide what's best for their site when it comes to woodland creation? Tree planting can help introduce trees to a new area in the absence of a local seed source. However, naturally regenerated trees are better adapted to the conditions of the local environment and often survive better than planted trees. These regenerating trees are the offspring of those already thriving in the local area, making these woodlands more resilient to climate change, pests and disease. You can combine the two approaches if you feel it would be beneficial to your woodland creation aims, perhaps by planting species of which there is no nearby seed source in order to increase the diversity of your wood. Some species, for example aspen, rarely set seed and instead spread vegetatively through their roots as shoots and suckers. If there is no aspen in or near your site, it may be necessary to plant species like these if you would like to introduce it to your woodland. The level of grazing on your land will have an impact on how successful your woodland establishment efforts are. Wild animals such as deer, rabbit, hare and voles eat saplings and can damage young trees, so it may be necessary to protect them. This can be done in many ways. Two options are tree guards and deer fencing. Lethal control of deer to reduce their numbers locally is another option and even encouraging birds of prey onto your land using perching posts and nest box can help naturally control the numbers of hares, rabbits and voles. While deer fencing is an effective way of reducing grazing on a site, it's not the perfect solution. Fencing is expensive and it's prone to damage over time and when it fails, this allows deer to get back onto the land. Furthermore, they present a real hazard to woodland birds which may strike them accidentally in flight. Maintenance and monitoring of the robustness of the fence will be required to ensure that it's working properly and installing strike markers like these can help reduce bird strikes. Tree guards are a well-known way of protecting young trees but they're problematic for a number of reasons. Firstly, they're often forgotten about and are rarely retrieved from the landscape when the trees have established. Plastic tree guards will slowly deteriorate over time, resulting in the release of microplastics which can pollute the soil and ultimately enter the food chain. Biodegradable guards, such as those made from cardboard, are an environmentally friendly and sustainable alternative, however these are less durable. Guards in general can also lead to tree rot which can kill the young tree. So landowners need to consider whether they actually need to use tree guards at all or if there's other ways that they can protect their trees. Planting trees in a regimented, uniform fashion too closely together can result in a dark understory leading to poor conditions for plants to grow, a bit similar to what we see in conifer timber plantations. Rather than cram as many trees together as possible, it may be better to plant more erratically with consideration given to the space around the trees helping to replicate the messiness and unevenness of the natural landscape, creating a mosaic of open and dense areas. So, to summarise, tree planting and natural regeneration are two viable methods of woodland creation which are not necessarily mutually exclusive of one another. There are benefits and challenges to both methods and landowners considering their options should first look to the history of their site. What are the species in the surrounding area and any pressures facing new trees. And by assessing these factors, it will hopefully help guide you on your woodland rewilding journey. Thank you all for watching the second part of this rewilding mini series. If you haven't seen the first video, if you look in the description below, you'll find a link to that video. And you'll also see a link to my own channel, The Econogist, if you fancy checking that out. 
In the meantime, if you'd like to see more woodland and rewilding content, please consider subscribing to the Woodlands TV channel. Thank you.